Jesus. I am silly. Okay, let's do this. Welcome to 2023, people. Welcome to 2023, right? So right away, I looked up Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. You don't have to look there. I'm just going to read it to you real quick. Remember, don't bring it to your mind. Don't make a memorial about it. Don't mention it. Don't think on it. Ye not the former, the past things. Neither consider, which means try to understand, the things of old. Behold, I will do. The Lord's going to do, ordain, execute, and perform a new thing which is not previously known or used. Now it shall spring forth, which means grow abundantly. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, which is our mouth, our speech, and rivers, which is prosperity, in the desert, which is a desolate place. So let whatever it was in the past, you let it go. So we're going to let it go. And let's go into what God has for us, into something better, because it's going to be something better on the other side, right? So whatever that was, we're not bringing it in 2023. I told Ben last night, I'm staying up for 2023 because I want to look her in the eye and say, you're not bringing any mess from 2022 into 2023. You're not bringing any past. You're not bringing in old decisions. You're not bringing in the old patterns, the old behaviors. I'm not bringing that with 2023 because we're doing something new because God wants to do something new. And he's not remembering the stuff that you've done. When you repented about it, you made uh, um, peace with things. He's not bringing it up. So he wanted me right away to read Isaiah. Don't even bring it up. Don't even mention it. Don't make a memorial. Don't keep bringing it up. This happened to me 10 years ago. That happened to me five years ago. I can't believe she did that to me last month. God is saying, let it go. Because that's what's holding you up. Right? So listen, today I got a word. But it's not like this is the word for 2023. Okay? Because I really know... The Lord showed me he does not move necessarily on our calendars. So he'll give words and it could be for 90 days. It could be for the next 10 years. It could be for a year. It could be for whatever he wants. Because <laughs> I tell you last year when the Lord showed me the word celebration. I was like, celebration is it. That's, that's it for us. We were seeing celebration. And my family, we were celebrating a lot of things in the natural. OK, but we were also seeing some celebration of things in the spirit. OK, first off, last year when Roe v. Wade was overturned, that's the time of celebration. OK, and I'm not saying that things have happened, that everything has been great and good. It has not always been great. We know that the Lord said that things are not going to be easy. OK, but how are we going to respond to the things when they come at us? OK, so right away um, with celebration, I was like, um, I graduated. My daughter graduated. Uh, we got an engagement. Did I tell y'all that? Oh, my daughter and David are engaged. Stand up. Stand up. Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Stop it, Joe. Uncle Joe. Listen. <laughs> But let me tell you, so I'm like, we're all celebrating. So I'm just like, okay, celebrating, that's fine. Um, for my birthday, I turned to Big 50. And then my main theme was like celebrating, cool in the gang, right? So I was like, cool in the gang, celebrate. So all of a sudden, Becky comes to me the end of November. Hey, Tasha, I want to take you with me to see a, a cruise ship. Because we all know our, our first lady, Pastor Becky, is a travel agent, okay? So we go and look at this ship. Well, as soon as we pull up, what's the name of the ship? Celebration. I'm like... Becky, did you know the ship <laughs> celebration? Come on, we've got a great time. Well, we are. We get on the ship, and who do they have as a special guest? Cool in the game. <laughs> Singing celebration. I was like, okay, Lord, you're reminding me. And let me tell you another part. So where I'm sitting, who sits next to me? The manager of Cool in the Game is right here. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> and I, I was going to say, can I get backstage? But I didn't want to be one of those type of people, Okay. <laughs> I will stay in the spirit, like, okay. I might got to minister to them later. I don't want to, you know. I was already getting yelled at from the back. Sit down in front. Because <laughs> I'm all jamming. That's so cool. And I'm like, ah! I'm jamming. Sit down in front. I'm like, well, this is a concert. But listen. So I'm telling you, the Lord was like, all right, all right. So I'm just going to remind you, there's still so many more things we are going to celebrate in 2023. That word wasn't just for 2022, okay? And even with P.T. and Becky, what they did with their grandson, that might have been tough, but we celebrating. That boy is going on, smiling at Santa when his other, the sister's crying. I mean, it's like everything is like coming into play. 
So I'm not going to say I'm not getting anything for today. I have I have quite a bit of downloads for today. And and many of you know that I speak very prophetically. So the word I give, let me just say this. The prophetic is is also um, built on what you do with the word. It's on how I can give you a word all day and say this thing's going to be great and this, this, that. But if you're still sitting there doing the same thing, not doing anything, well, then the word's not going to work for you. So you can't look at anybody else like how they getting blessed and what's going on with them because they're doing what the Lord is telling them to do, being obedient. And I say this, if you're like being obedient, but then you're not being obedient, you wait months to be obedient, you're still being, that's still delayed disobedience. So the thing is, you want to get to the point where, hey, I'm hearing the Lord, I'm going to knock this out and do this, right? So I'm going to tell you right away, I believe it's going to be increased in certain areas. So when I'm hearing Christy up there talking about increase, I'm like, ah, the Holy Ghost is a sneaky something. Sneaky Stevie. Well, I got Steven, right? Sneaky Stevie. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. And listen, I know increase seem very simple when I say it's going to be, it's going to be a season of like increase. And you know me, I like to break down words. So increases become a progressively greater as in size, amount, number, or intensity. Enlarge means implies expansion or extension. Multiply implies increase in number by natural generation or indefinite repetition of a process. Augment implies addition to what is already well grown or well developed. Enrich is the act or process of increasing and such an addition or enlargement in size becoming greater. Okay. So when I'm seeing increase, I'm not talking about a little increase like one plus one is two. Okay. I'm talking about an exponential type of increase. Not only in addition, but in multiplication. So if I go to Lulu and say, Lulu, here's $500. I'm going to add another $500. She's going to get $1,000, right? And that's great. We like, give me the $1,000. But if I go to David and go, here's $500, and I'm going to multiply another $500 to that, David, well, you're getting $250,000. So I'm going to take the multiplication. And the Lord is saying he's going to multiply the increase in this season, Right? How many want the multiplication? So when I'm saying multiplication and increase, I'm talking about exponential flow. It's not based on what's happening in the economy. We do not look at what is happening in the economy. We don't look at all these doom and words like this is happening, this is going to happen. We're running out of food. We're running. None of that even matters to us because we know who our daddy is. We don't go without anything. We don't go without food. We don't go without shelter. We don't go without anything that we need because he's given us all that we ever need. Everything. And I want to say I'm talking to people who are going to increase of those who diligently seek him. That has really been on my heart. Diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Because we always think that we could do. And not that the Lord is wanting us to do all these things. But there's a sense of obedience and being based on this word that has to align with what he's saying. Because too many people in the body of Christ tend to think that they're Christians and doing right because they come to church, but they're living a completely different lifestyle and then expect the Lord to bless them in all these areas. Well, enough of that. Because that's not happening. It's not happening. He wants, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. A rewarder. You got to be intimate. Like with the marriage, I'm intimate with my husband. If I start stepping back, not really talking to him, not spending time with him, well, then something's going to happen in our marriage. And it's the same with the father. If you're not spending time with him, not in his word, not praying, not anything, but expect this type of relationship, it's not going to happen. Right? So, increase. Let's talk about some increase. Turn to 1 Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12, 4. The Lord showed me a couple of things that's going to increase. A couple of things. So we're going to go at 12, verse 4. And there are differences and administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with them. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one 
But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and have many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. I see an increase, the Lord showed me, in gifts. Say increase in gifts. He's going to increase the gifts that's already on the inside of you. Okay. And I'm not talking about natural talent. I got a time to talk. Okay. I got in trouble all my life from teachers saying she talks too much in class. That was the talent. Okay. I'm not saying it was God given. It must have just came to me. I don't know. A talent to talk. But now the Lord's using this talent as a God given gift to the body of Christ to be used for his glory. Right. But I'm talking about the supernatural gifts that each and every one of you have that has been endowed from heaven. Each and every one of you have it. And they are supernatural abilities and powers. You can't do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. Some of you may be sitting here right now going, well, Lord, I wonder what kind of gifts that I have. What do I have? But I'm here to tell you there's so much more inside of you. And I believe before you leave today, you're going to have that enhancing of what that gift is. And I'm going to tell you, you may not even operate in that gift before. You may not even touched it at all. But I'm telling you, God is going to start announcing what that is and raise that thing up in you. You wonder how that happened. Spending time with him. Spending time with him is going to give him access to open up those gifts to him. How do your gifts increase? By using the gifts. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, PT, Ben, people could have been prophesying to me the rest of my life. You called to preach. You're going to do this. You got to preach. God says you're going to... I could have sat there kept hearing it, and if I never got up and used it, what is the use of people keep telling me I'm called to preach? I could sit here and tell you all to you blue in the face, your gifts, but if you don't step out in faith and start using the gift for his glory, you won't ever do it. And let me tell you, you don't have to step out thinking you got to be perfect in it because baby, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up, but you're going to mess up and make mistakes under the glory of God that he's going to cover that thing. So trust him in that. I can't tell you how many times I got up and said things. I'm like, oh, I used the wrong verbiage. Oh, why did I say that? Oh, why did I, you know? But I'm like, Lord, I said exactly what you said. I had to step away from it and say, Lord, that's on you now. I, I, I don't know what else to do. Now, there's things that he's still tweaking in me still because we're all growing. None of us have arrived. Mike, no Mike. We haven't arrived. There's still things that he's doing in each and every one of us, but still step out and use the gift that he has because we need it in this time and age. This is the time. Enough of, of the enemy showing his gifts. We're done with that. It's time for us to show the supernatural abilities and powers that he has given us and to step out in that thing boldly. Okay? Boldly. It's not even about you anymore. So if you get yourself out of the way, you don't care if you're making mistakes and messing up because it's about him. When you step in, you know you're touching someone else's life. You're healing someone someone else you're speaking into their life you're encouraging them you're laying hands on them you're doing what he has called you to do yes. right yes. everything Jesus did was the work of the spirit yes. every gift he did was a work of the spirit and he's the one that said everything I do you would do also and greater works will you do he said that yes. greater works you don't got the Holy Ghost or the anointing so that the hair on the back of your neck can stand up. You don't have the Holy Ghost or anointing so you can get goosebumps. You don't have the Holy Ghost or anointing so you can say, I got an anointing on me. No, you got it so you can give to someone else. And I believe today you're going to be activated more and more in those gifts. Today. Instead of evil being put on display, baby, the shift is happening. And God's going to start putting us on display. Satan has been mocking the powerless church for far too long. He keeps mocking it. But you know what? God is going to start saying, you know what, devil? You were mocking. Well, now it's my time to get on up in there, right? And I get he mocking the powerless churches. Because if there's churches who has a sign on the door that says, do not go in there speaking in tongues in a sanctuary, well, of course he's going to mock the church. If, he's there, if there's churches that have a sign that says, don't go lay hands on anybody, well, then you know what? That is a powerless church. If he has churches that still say, wear your mask, then yeah, that might be a powerless church. But up in here, and then you, you got power on the inside of you, baby, that you're going to start displaying for the world to see. And listen, I get it. Because I know people like, don't speak in tongues in here. Don't Because do, people get creepy. Let's tell it like it is. There are some nuts, bolts, and flakes up in the body of Christ. Okay? I've seen them, been around them, and I'm like, whoa, yo daddy, my daddy, something's not right. Okay? But I heard Lester Semerall say one time he would rather have a strange fire than some frozen icicles. 
So as crazy as it looks, you're still like, well, I'm going to pray because maybe that just needs to be mature in that gift. Maybe you need to mature in there. Maybe you're really trying. You're, you're being used, but that's just, Lord, just work on them. Because listen, I'm going to tell you, the gifts in you are not to be sitting on a shelf. The gifts in you are not supposed to be like, it's a, in, in the museum. These are some relics that I have, these gifts. There's a relics. Can nobody touch it? The, don't touch the glass. These are my gifts. God is not saying that. Get them off the shelf, right? They're not supposed to be in the museum. You're not a museum. Stop holding the gifts hostage, people. I'm like, Lord, they're holding it hostage. And stop saying, well, Lord, you got to show me that I got to use this gift. What I'm supposed to do. And God said, I've been telling you what to do. Just do it. Just do it. Just move out. Move out. And as you're using your gifts, please, please, please have Christ-like character. Christ-like character with Christ-like power. Right? You need both. You need both. Christ-like character and power. You need the fruits of the Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Okay? You need them both. This is why I'm saying the nuts, folks, and flakes, because they all in the power, and it's like, where the character part that backs it? That's for another word. Listen, guys, the Lord has been using me even more in words of wisdom, working in wisdom, because when I counsel people, there are things that they're trying to keep away. They don't want to tell me everything. They just want to come and say, I'm dealing with this thing, and I'm sitting here hearing the Holy Ghost like, mm -mm, there's more. And I'm like, I'm sensing some type of trauma in this area. Oh, they're like, oh, did I tell you that? No. I'm sensing you have a part to play in this area. You blame it all on your husband. I'm sensing this kind of you because you do. Oh, what the? It's, it's, it's the words of wisdom. I'm, I'm getting the knowledge. It's just coming out and I'm helping these people. But that's when I'm, I'm trusting the Lord. And even if they say, well, no, not really. <laughs> I don't care. I'm like, I'm going to say it anyway. Because I'm just trusting the Holy Spirit. Things drop, I'm just going to say it. It is what it is, right? And I know that he gives us the gifts when they are needed. Don't get caught up thinking you operate in one gift. When you need to operate in something else, he will give it to you. Now, there are some who are more mature in other gifts that God has definitely called them to. However, he will give you the gifts you need at the time that you need them. Right? But you got to start somewhere. And the gifts, believe me when I say it, they're going to start increasing if you allow it to increase in your life. First Corinthians, you don't have to turn to this. First Corinthians 12, 27, 31 says, all of you together are Christ's body. Each of you is part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles. Some people in here do miracles. Those who have the gift of healing, that's you. Those who can do miracles, those I'm sorry, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. Let me just say that sometimes there are people who can truly speak in tongues and it's from another country. They're speaking some type of African dialect or they're speaking some uh, Chinese and there's some other. So there are some who can do that. OK, are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. First Corinthians 14, one says, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. First Peter 4, 10, 11 says, God has given each of you a gift from his variety of spir uh, spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. See, the gift is not just for you, to serve one another. Romans 12, 8. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. I'm trying to give you all these verses that's talking about gifts so you don't think I'm up here lying. I'm trying to give you the word to back this, okay? So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach them well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Amen. Last one, I think. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Yeah. These are gifts. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Who wants to have an increase in spirit and gifts? It's kingdom mandate. 
Let's go to Mark 9. So there's going to be an increase in gifts. I'm going to read Mark 9, 49 through 50, or the New King James Version. For everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. The Lord is showing me there's going to be an increase in seasoning, which is in being salty. Now, let me say something. So for those of you who might know a little slang about being salty, I'm just going to bring that up right quick. Because <laughs> you think I'm saying being salty in the right way, you're like, wait, what? No, no. Salty does have a negative connotation in the world. Okay. Because I would say sometimes when I see somebody like back in the day, I'm like, oh, she's being real salty. That means she's having an attitude, right? She's angry. She's irritated. Just, just being petty over something little. Just real salty. But when the Lord says you're being salty, he's saying you're the salt of the earth. Amen. See, the enemy always try to take something and make it negative, but it's not as it was the Lord's in the first place, okay? So he's saying you're the salt of the earth. And there's an increase coming for the salty ones to be more of an influence, to improve and make the earth a better place. Do not lose your saltiness. You're salty. Say, I'm salty. I'm going to tell you, if you are chasing your own plans, your own goals, your own ambitions, you're going to lose your saltiness. I say that again. If you are chasing after your own ambitions and goals, you're going to lose your saltiness. Your words, your lives, your actions shall always be seasoned with salt. How many know salt always makes stuff taste better? And sometimes I eat someone's food, I'm like, they don't have any salt in here. <laughs> like, you can just say, this is not good. Need salt. Add salt, it's going to increase the flavor. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, because you salty. Y'all y'all call to draw out the hidden flavor in people. Ooh, that was good. Thank you, Lord. That just came from me. You pull out the, the hidden flavor. Oh, Jesus. Let me remind you. I said you're going to be seasoned with salt. You're not paprika. You're not garlic. Now, garlic may taste good, but it's males, okay? You're not garlic. Salt don't have a scent like that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Salt pre preserves and they fends off decay. Salt also heals and soothes. you salty, people. You're salty, right? Has a medicinal value. But let me tell you something. Salt only works when you shake it out of the salt shaker. Let the salt come out of you, people of God. Let the salt come out. And not the salt where you're in the, in the restaurant and it's not coming out and you got to go take the top off. And No, you don't want to be stuffy like that. Flow freely with the salt. Thank you, Jesus. Any seasoned salty ones in the building? Matthew 5, 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It's going to be thrown out. Thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You don't want to be the salt that they have up north. That they throw on the ground so people don't fall and the drive that people can drive their cars. You don't want to be that kind of salt. You want to be the salt that enhances, right? Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. You need to be salty so you can bring flavor back to your community. Be salty so you can bring flavor back to your family members. Be salty so you can bring the favor back to your jobs. Be salty so you can bring it even in church. You got to make sure you have your salt. Bring your salt so it can bring flavor back to your marriages. Huh? Flavor back to your finances, people. Listen, I don't care what the world is doing. I don't watch the news because this is the only news I need. I don't even look at the news. People come in and say, did you see this happening? No. I don't really care because I know this is what's happening. This stays happening. So even if it's crazy out there, you keep your saltiness, people. Salty ones, you know what I'm saying? And I said any salty ones. Y'all say y'all salty? Okay, just want to make sure because salty ones have a, a strong prayer life. Because we all like, we salty. Then I'm going to start naming stuff. You're like, wait, what, what? Listen, you hear this? Get your salt back, okay? You're on fire for God. You got a strong prayer life. And I don't mean not making the Lord a priority, giving him five minutes after you went through your whole day and you're going to sleep. Oh, Father, thank you for letting me. Okay. 
I mean, making him a priority, giving him the best part of you instead of the last part. Salty ones are bold and confident and they know it comes from the Holy Ghost. Salty ones like to turn the world upside down like they did in Acts, huh? Salty ones ain't hiding their stuff under a bushel. They're not hiding. They have a voice. They're testifying about Jesus. When people say you're different, they're not going, well, I, yeah, I am different. No, they're saying it's Jesus, okay? Salty ones don't just sit back, lay down, and be passive and quiet or overly sensitive because they don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Amen. They're not okay with tailoring the truth. Salty ones know who they are and they know who they have on the inside of them, period, okay? They know greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. They know it's not no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me, the hope of glory. They know who it is on the inside of them, the salty ones, huh? They know who their power source is and where it comes from. They live a life that is holy and acceptable unto the Father. I'm gonna say that again. They live a life that is holy and acceptable unto the Father, Salty ones have the character to back up what they say by how they live. Yes. Salty ones are not led by their feelings because they know their feelings can come up against God. Right. I always tell people when they say, oh, my feelings, I'm like, I'm going to say this on video. I'm just going to say it. I'm like, your feelings can go right to hell. All I care. Because you're not led by your feelings. Your feelings are going to get you caught up. Your feelings will start having you hear from the enemy all the time. Your feelings will get you in a place where you're not supposed to be. But those who are salty are led by the spirit. That's what the Lord says. His sons are led by the spirit. Sons are majority. Don't think I'm excluding the women. Sons mean majority. So we are led by the spirit of God. Not by our feelings, not by our emotions, not by what someone said. By the spirit of God. I don't care if you stand alone. In this season, be led by the spirit of God. Say, I'm salty. God is initiating. I know he is releasing some supernatural Holy Ghost hit men and women. We're called to be Holy Ghost hit men and women. Not this. Yeah, we, we're snipers, but we're also Holy Ghost hit men and women. We know exactly what to say, when to say it, how to say it, who to say it to. And then it's going to manifest some things. We just don't speak our words just to be saying something. Our words have created creative juice and power. Just like if we say that who lives on the inside of us, whatever you say, open your mouth, you've got creative abilities. So whether you speak in life or death, I pray you speak life, but you're going to start seeing wherever you are right now is because of things that's been coming out of your mouth. Mouth. If I'm saying there's increase, you speak increase. I don't care what it looks like in your bank account. I don't care what any of your family members say. I don't even think of, go by the increase of what the father is saying today. Amen. Another part the Lord said about increase of salty stand being increase of the full being full of oil. You don't have to turn to it. First John two twenty seven says, "As for you, the anointing, the special gift, the preparation which you have received from Him remains permanently in you, not temporary, permanently." in you and you have no need for anyone to teach you but just as his anointing teaches you giving you insight through the presence of the Holy Spirit about all things and it's true and it's not a lie and just as his anointing has taught you you must remain in him being rooted in him knit to him an increase in the oil is only going to take place by abiding in him I always knew that you didn't you don't want to be caught ashy that's what we say black and brown people say ashy I don't know y'all white people get ashy right <laughs> You don't get ashy? Okay, we're saying ashy. That's why I was thinking while I'm saying ashy because black and brown, we get ashy. Okay, so that means my elbow's not ashy, but it'll be white right here. Okay, really white on my elbow. Dry. Dry. Knees will be really white, like ashy and dry and cracking. Powder donuts around your lips, like white. Growing up, my mother would take a whole bottle bottle of baby oil and like I'm like greasy face arms body legs feet like walking around shining like the, the shining all the time because it was known you don't want to be ashy okay so right away when the Lord was like you gotta be full of oil like you can't go around ashy people you do not want to represent the father being dry and ashy with white dry cracking spots all over see now y'all laughing but y'all can go like oh she said we can't be ashy and you're gonna remember be full of oil not ashy smooth and shiny and soft <laughs> right because <laughs> we know let's 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 take it to the spiritual aspect we know in the body of christ there are many people who are ashy yep. and dry right not full of oil 
Not doing anything for the father and standing expecting him to do everything, right? Because God's in control of everything. That's what they say. You're dry. What are you going to do to help someone else if God is going to be in control of everything? Someone said that just in my, my counseling session the other day. And I said, well, is God in control if I stand up right now and slap you in the face? Or was that just me? She laughed. I went, yeah, that's how I'm laughing. And when you say God's in control of everything, it doesn't make sense. You have to do something. You're his hands and feet. If I'm saying you got increase, what are you going to do for the increase? God's not bringing you a drop in a bag of money in your front step. Amen. You want to be married? He's not just going to show the husband up there. Your husband right there. You got to do some things, right? You want to operate in the gifts? You got to use the gifts. You want to hear more from the Lord and be able to prophesy to people? Get in the word because you can prophesy based on the word of God. You just got to do something, okay? Jesus, where am I on here? I'm coming off my notes. Jesus, I said that. It just reminded me of like when he poured the oil on the beard and the beard went overflow. Like in this season, we have to be overflowing with his oil. It's so important because things are going to hit the body of Christ and hit people. And you have to be so filled. You can't be dry yourself that when things come to from people come to you with their things and you don't even know what to say because you just is dry. And it's going to take you spending time with him, getting to hear what he's saying so that you could be ready. It's not just about you. There's people who need us. They need the oil that we have. They need us to tell them who who they who they can um if they, they need hope, that we have the hope. They know if they need healing in their body, that we can bring that healing. They know if they need something financially, we don't just say, hey, I'll pray for your finances. Well, here's 10 bucks. I mean, they need us to be Christ. They need us to see. They don't want us to keep talking about the church and Christianity anymore. They want to know, who are you? Who is this Jesus that you talk about? Well, here's this Jesus I'm talking about. I'm going to be very bold with it. People know, don't come to me with stuff. Because I'm telling you, if you call me, I'm going to say exactly what it is. My sister even said the other day, Tosh, I'm going to tell you to pray for this because I know it's when you pray, things be happening. My dad, by the grace of God, is still alive with the stage four cancer that he had from 2018. That the doctors told him, you're a miracle. Yes, you're a miracle. The doctors keep telling him, like, something's up. Like, you're a miracle. It's like, yeah, God loves you. And I told my dad, as joking, but I mean it too. I'm like, I'm praying for you, dad. That's why. <laughs> I'm praying. I'm you're my family. The Lord covers me because I love you. You're part of my family. He covers everyone that I love. He covers everything that I own. He covers that because of who I am. He knows I'm daughter of the most high. He knows who I am. So he knows when I can pray for him and cover it. I cover this church. I pray for each and every one of you. There is things that he has called us to do that we have to start stepping into and no longer giving excuses or reasons behind it no more reasons and excuses in 2023 because God has called you to start opening your mouth even more he's calling you to dip into that gift for yourself yes and also for other people he's calling you to trust him in that increase trust him in the increase in the finances trust him in the increase in gifts trust him in the increase of the oil because what he wants to do is something new he doesn't want to do the same thing he's done in 2020 2021 or 2022 he wants to do something new on you if you just open yourself up to that give him access to it you didn't give him access before but now it's time to give him that access because there's great things he wants to do greater things he wants to do in you greater things he says greater things say greater things it doesn't stop right here you're not just sitting here being a, a seat warmer God's not calling you to be a seat warmer he's calling you to warm up other people's hearts he's calling you to go lay hands on them he's calling you to be bold about it huh he's calling you to do that I'm not just wearing this shirt that looks like Joseph colors and the promises of God the promises of God are yes and amen and they want to start manifesting in this year for you whatever that is but make sure you got the Christ character make sure you back it with the Christ power with it because I can sit and talk all day to people but when I said when I open my mouth and start praying they sense the presence of God, honey, that that settles it right there. They don't got to know who I'm from. I'm like, let me pray for you. And that's going to be the same for each and every one of you. Start being bold for him. Start doing that because he's done too much for you. Be like, I'm about my daddy's business like Nehemiah. I can't come down to foolishness. I'm not going to stoop to anyone's level anymore. Either you come up here or I got to go. I got on wings. We're going to fly like eagles. We ain't chickens anymore. You're not chickens in a chicken coop. You flying like an eagle. That's a prophetic gesture. You fly and you go with the flow, the flow of the wind, the flow of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to start doing things anymore on your own and then go on to the Father repenting later. Stop it. It stops today. So I right now I speak to everyone their gifts that they be raised up 
up right now. Raise up gifts in Jesus' name. Be resurrected. Those things that's been dormant in people, I call them alive right now in Jesus' name. Those gifts, those talents that God has given you will be manifested in Jesus' name. It's not even too late. I'm sensing boomers again. The Lord's saying the boomers. He's using boomers. Hey, ha ha, say K. He's going to use them in a whole new avenue right now. These boomers are going to rise up and start ministering to the people and ministering to the young people. Tell them how to do it because they've done it. God has an anointing on the boomers right now in Jesus' name. Boom! Like dynamite. Boom! Like the Holy Ghost. Boom! Set it on fire on the earth right now in Jesus' name. All right, Generation X. Come on, Jesus. Generation X, the unknown. Well, God says he's going to start making things known to us. Us Generation X. That we just do things because we, we were latchkey kids. But God said he's given us the keys to life. He's given us the keys to be able to give people other keys. He's calling us to stand on that unknown, but we have the known thing for people to know. And we're going to go ahead and tell them who it is. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's the only God that does miracles. He's the only God that does signs, wonders, and miracles. He's the only God. God, right? He's the only God. Buddha ain't doing miracles. Buddha didn't get raised back up from the dead. He ain't doing any of that. God, Jesus is the only one who does signs, wonders, and miracles. He's the only one that answers your prayers. These other guys don't answer prayers. Jesus is the only one. Generation G Z. Hey, ha ha, say. Generation Z. All right, come on, God. God's in the Generation Z. I don't know. I'm not on notes. Father, thank you. Generation Z. There's going to be some Jehus rising up in a Generation Z. He is going to call you. You're not like Elijah. Hey, yeah. Generation Zs are not like Elijah. They're like Jehu. They just say things and go. They don't even care anymore about what, how it's going to make you feel or anything. They're just going to say things, that's what the Lord said, and go. And I thank you for that. Who I'm missing? Millennials. Yeah. Yeah. Millennials, millennials gonna start helping the church even more with social media stuff, with getting out there even more. The millennials gonna start doing millennial things in Jesus' name. Where was I? Any salty people in the building? Any oily people in the building? Who's salty and oily? Who's ready to do the seasoning? Who's ready to be seasoned for God? Who's ready to use that oil for God? Who's ready to be so full with oil? They smear oil on everybody else. You rub and smear it on everybody else. The anointing that's on the inside of you. Hallelujah. You going to 2023 differently, huh? You going into this year differently. You trusting God with the increase. Whew. You don't believe me about the supernatural increase? Genesis 26, 12, and 13. Then Isaac planted seed in that land as a farmer and reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as he has planted. A hundred times as much as he has planted in the same year. That's supernatural. And the Lord blessed and favored him. And the man Isaac became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and extremely distinguished. Immediate increase is coming. Immediately. Immediate increase. Chrissy, no. Chrissy and Pat, no. Immediate increase. You ain't even expecting, but you're expecting. That makes sense. Not expecting, but I'm expecting. You know he gonna do it, you're just not sure how he gonna do it. When I transitioned to a new career, I didn't work full time. I took a break. And I'm sitting there going, Lord, I'm not getting a paycheck, but you know what? You're going to supernaturally supply. Because that's what your word says. You're going to supernaturally supply. And he supernaturally supplied all of the way. I ain't been without anything. Matter of fact, I even had more. Thank you, Lord. Because that's how he does. That's how he does those who are about his business. That's why it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. All of these things. That's all. Thank you, Lord. Immediate increase. And it's going to occur without you accomplishing a whole bunch without delay. It's advancing and prompt. There's going to be immediate increase in restoration, rejuvenation, reconciliation, revision, recovering, rebuilding. Say immediate increase. Immediate. Listen, no other, no other God can do things immediately. No other God, no other Lord can have you being one place in one day and completely somewhere else differently. Everybody blink your eyes. Blink. Blink. That's how fast God can turn things around. In the blink of an eye. 
that fast in the spirit. You don't even know. You blinked and he's already moving and doing things in the spirit you have no idea about. Thank you, Jesus. Just why it says you can go from weeping in the night and the next morning you crying for joy. What other God does that? You weeping at night and the next morning you're crying for joy. That's a good God. Man. Y'all got me going. Thank you, Jesus, because he's so good. I can't help myself at times to say how good he is, that he's the only one that can break off cha chains and fetters. He's the only one that can break off bondages. He's the only one that can bring deliverance from demons when you're dealing with legion. He's the only one that can bring restoration to family members. He's the only one that can bring prodigals home. He's the only one that can give you healing when your doctors wrote you out. He's the only one that can look at your bank account and say it's zero, and you speak to it in its abundance. He's the only God that can do that. He's the only God that can break off trauma from your life. Huh. He's the only one that can heal you from these triggers that the world has so-called said you have. He's the only one that can do that. He's the only one that can, when you make mistakes can make it like it never happened. Hallelujah. The Lord's saying right now that he's going to do things that it look like it never even happened. It never even happened. That's a good God. It never even happened. The addiction never happened. The sexual abuse never happened. The rejection never happened. Huh. You hear what I'm saying? It never happened. When he said there's new things, there's new things. What the enemy spoke over you, I break it right now in Jesus' name. Those lies that the enemy has spoken over you. Those lies that your family members have spoken over you. Those lies that some of your friends have spoken over you. I break them right now in Jesus' name. I rip them up from the root and I plead the blood of Jesus over it. Ha! Shake ta baha. Don't mess with us devil anymore. You know who we are and the power we have on the inside of us. Don't mess with us. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. He's increasing. He's increasing things in you. He's increasing things in your family. He's increasing the miracles. He's increasing the signs and the wonders. He's increasing that for you. There's going to be things happening for people you never thought would be saved. And they're going to show up in the place. You're going to be like, wait, what? You saved now? There are going to be people operating the things that you never even thought would operate in it. When this stuff start happening, I want you guys to get up and say, let me just say, this did happen. This is happening. That happened. Testify the goodness of God. Testify of it. Say immediately. Thank you, Jesus. This is, I'm going to say this immediately. The Lord starts showing me immediate stuff. We're talking about immediate increase. Acts 3, 6, 7 says, And Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. It's going to be happening for you guys. Acts 9, 18. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. And he received his sight at once. Luke 1 64 immediately his mouth was open and his tongue loose and spoke praising God Luke 13 13 and he laid hands on her and immediately she was made straight that's right, that's right. Like, it never like it never happened Woo! Mark 1 42 as soon as he had spoken immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed some of you got to lay hands on people get them delivered and then help get them cleansed that's a whole nother thing Thank you, Lulu, because you're, you're doing that. Luke 4, 39. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she rose and then started serving them. Say immediately. immediately. Last thing, I'm going to let you guys go. I felt like the Lord started speaking to me about many people think because the period is on, on something like the period, the exclamation point of a period that when you do that in grammar, that means it's the end of the sentence. It's the end. And the Lord starts showing me that this is a season of the semicolon. I'm telling y'all, the things he's given me is so weird. It like weird. Increase digit, but the semicolon. And I'm like semicolon because with a semicolon, that means there's still more to the story. It doesn't end where you think it ends. You might say, well, I think that season ended. I'm done. That's not No, there's a semicolon, which means there's more that's going to happen for you. There's so much more. They got strength, right? So he's telling me to tell you it's not over.
If whatever it is that you are praying for and believing God for, and if that's not manifested in your life, it's not over, right? Because he's a God that does things that's manifest in our life. It manifests. So whatever it is, whatever that is, that you got that semicolon, it's time to worship him through the increase, right? Time to praise him through it. It's time to walk it through it with your anointing, right? Gosh, Jesus. If your story didn't end in restoration, it's not over. If it didn't end in healing in your body, it's not over. It's not done. Jesus. I just speak over you again just to be ready for the increase, the increase in gifts, increase in being seasoned with salt, an increase, immediate, immediate increase, and the semicolon. Just remember all those. I know it's a lot, but just remember all those because God wants to do something great in each and every one of your life. And I just pray that. I'm trying to end some of my honey can come up and do um, communion. But Jesus, we thank you. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you. Hold on. Hold on one minute. I'm going to call you up. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel like he wants to do something else, and I'm just trying to hear what he's trying to have me to do. Come on. Thank you, Jesus.